Well, thank you, Corey. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is scare everybody that's helped me prepare and go off script, just to take this moment to say thanks to so many people that have uh, seen and envisioned what we're doing today and made this possible. And we have some of our employees here today. Thank you, employees. Thanks for being here. You're awesome. City Council members, thank you. Appreciate you being here. And with that, let's jump in. Well, I want the city to know I have never been more excited for Provo's future than I am today. Almost every indicator coming from all directions validates that Provo is on a roll. Recently, downtown ranked number fourth in the entire nation based on data that includes improvements in retail, office vacancy rates, income growth, reduction in unemployment, and overall livability. Imagine how it would, that ranking would have looked if we would have included our 50 independently owned restaurants and our 40 buildings listed on the National Register of Historic Places or our downtown's amazing music scene. The momentum downtown continues to build. This year, the state of Utah will begin construction on a 160,000 square foot state courts building, and they'll transform their old building into a MATC campus, which will bring thousands of students into our downtown area every day. We'll see construction begin on a new downtown, downtown hotel, along with a number of living units, and of course, this beautiful dedication of the te LDS temple right behind me. Provo's startup ecosystem is electrifying. We continue to be one of the best places in the United States to start a business. Boom Startup, One Million Cups, Camp 4, Startup Ignition, and BYU's Rawlings Center Launchpad are full of talented and aspiring entrepreneurs. Retail sales tax continues to grow. We've announced that we have new owners at our Provo Town Center Mall, and we're really excited for that. And just today, I met with the new owners of the Plum, Plum Tree Plaza, who shared with me some exciting news, and I can't wait to be able to share it with all of you. You're going to like it a lot. And of course, the shops at Riverwoods continues to lead the way for a unique quality shopping experience. In addition, thanks to the hard work of our school district, we're seeing new neighborhood schools that will strengthen our community and build neighborhoods. Our crime stats, already at an all-time low, continue to decrease. During the last few years, the city has solved major financial challenges, and our residents tell us that 80% of you, this is amazing, 80% of you feel like you get a good to excellent value for your Provo City tax dollar. Well, do we have any concerns? Does the city have challenges? Of course we do. But from my point of view, we have the formula to solve any problem that comes our way. I like to call it our triple threat. What is our triple threat? What is it that's helped us find a solution to iProvo, build our incredible recreation center, bring in scheduled service at the airport, revitalize downtown, and find solutions to road and parking funding, address our water infrastructure needs, and cut almost $8 million from the city budget during the last six years? In my mind, the answer lies in three specific areas. First, and most important, it's our residents. It's clear to me that without a city full of salt of the earth, hardworking, honest, and talented residents, we are nothing. Second, it's our city employees. They're amazing. Did you know that today, even with the new recreation center, we are operating the city with fewer employees than we did 15 years ago? I believe, thanks to these incredible employees, that the best tax dollar value anywhere in the world can be found here in Provo City. We're not perfect, but today, adjusting for inflation, you're paying less in Provo City property tax than you did almost two decades ago. We stand on, the third thing is we stand on the shoulders of people like Abraham Smoot, Becky Lockhart, and Shirley Paxman, men and women of vision, dedication, humility, and determination. This is the type of leader I aspire to be. I'm not embarrassed to tell you that I frequently go to my knees to ask for help giving this city the leadership it deserves. I express my appreciation to the 24 council members that have been part of my term and to the former Mayor Lewis Billings who left me a solid foundation. You know, I sometimes tease that my goals whenever I'm in public are don't embarrass my family, don't embarrass the city, and don't embarrass myself. But in truth, I aspire to do much more than that. I commit to you to being open and transparent with my agenda. I pledge that I will continue working hard with honesty and inclusion 
and to remember at all times the servant part of public servant. Now with my remaining few minutes, I'd like to share with you my areas of emphasis or my agenda for 2016. They fall into three categories. First, employees. I've mentioned how much respect I have for our employees. As I've worked with people over these last six years, I've come to know and greatly admire the men and women who keep our city running strong. Like you, I was sad to hear last week about the passing of one of Provo's great champions, Merrill Bingham. Merrill dedicated three decades of his life as our public works director. Provo is indebted to him and the Bingham family for the invaluable service he gave to our community. Daily, I hear glowing reviews about the contributions our city employees give to Provo. One recent story demonstrates this type of service that I'd like to share with you. I received a letter from a young lady who had a tragic experience. She was at the BYU Creamery on a cold and rainy day. As she walked out of the creamery because of the cold and the wet, her wedding ring slipped off her finger and she watched it roll down the street and into the storm drain. Not knowing what to do, she called our city. With only a few minutes left in the business day, not knowing if they could help. Within minutes, three of the city employees on their own time came out to help her. They removed the storm drain and took away two feet of sludge underneath which they found her wedding ring and gave it back to her. To me, that demonstrates the type of commitment that we have from our employees and how important it is for them to serve our residents. I feel like we owe it to our employees to give them opportunities to improve in advance. This year we'll be rolling out an enhanced tuition reimbursement program along with a mentoring program to help employees prepare for and be ready for leadership opportunities in their futures. We need to give our employees the tools they need to be successful and this year we begin a total overhaul of the city software. This will give us the tools we need to better communicate within our organization, measure data and respond to citizen feedback. Second area of emphasis is fiscal stewardship. Preparing the city budget is one of my most important duties. As in years past, we are working on a budget that will balance expenses with revenues. This is not unique. Throughout the history of the city, like other cities in the state, Provo has never submitted a budget that was not balanced. In addition, we'll continue to invest in critical infrastructure while still reducing the long-term forecasted gap in revenues and expenditures. I believe, and I believe it strongly, that during the last six years we've made more prog progress on laying a solid financial base for the city than at any other time in the city's history. Third area is the quality of life issues. Our residents have been loud and clear. Quality of life issues matter. Issues like saving Rock Canyon, improving pedestrian and bicycle safety, crime reduction, improved parks, and perhaps most important, quality neighborhoods are all high in the minds of our residents. I believe our largest single challenge as a city is enhancing and protecting the quality of life that makes us Provo. As good as we are, there are several areas I pledge to improve this upcoming year. Number one, we need more women in community and government. I'm excited to announce that for the first time ever, Provo City will be celebrating International Women's Day on March 8th. The City Center will be hosting a lecture series in our council chambers that day with some of Provo's most established business owners, academics, writers, philanthropists, and some of our promising women of aviation and tech. That evening, there will be events and service projects all over the city for people to attend and celebrate. Please see my blog for more details on this exciting new Provo tradition, and please plan to get involved. Well, the second thing is the inversion of 10 days ago was bad enough to remind all of us that we have more work to do with clean air. In several weeks, thanks to the hard work of former councilman Hal Miller, the city will be unveiling a clean air toolkit. The kit includes areas where individuals, businesses, and government can all share the load of reaching our clean air goals. Last fall, our residents overwhelmingly approved the Recreation, Arts, and Parks tax. As soon as it was passed, as promised, we began preparing to spend those dollars as committed, like we did with the library, recreation center, Covey Center, and other large capital projects. I commit that these dollars will be spent in a way that returns a large value for your tax dollar. Now, thank you for your time today. This has been fun, and thank you for using these unique tools to listen to us. It's been historic in many ways, as we've broadcast this message exclusively over social media platforms. 
I hope you'll join me this year in also doing things that you've never done before. I ask you to make 2016 a year to take advantage of the great resources here in Provo to start and build your own dreams and successes. After all, this is the legacy of Provo, a city where ingenuity, creativity, and productivity meets opportunity. So let's keep it going. Let's work to make this a city, a place where your children flourish and your grandchildren stay to inherit the spirit of this great place. Let's show the world what we call Provo, the city of starts, and let's start today. Thank you.